Hi, good afternoon, everybody, and, and thanks for the opportunity to talk to you as all. It's a genuine pleasure to get the opportunity to touch to such a diverse range of computer science educators. What this presentation is about, it's about a, a study that we've been conducting at Nafumba University, and it's a preliminary study. It's the results we're going to talk about this afternoon are the results from the study that we completed last academic year, and it focuses upon uh, our first year students. We've, we at Nafumbi have completed it in collaboration with Sheffield University where we've worked with Morgan Harvey who is a, a data scientist and otherwise statistics wizard and Professor Crick of Swansea University. Uh, Recognising that there's a diverse audience here, I think one of the things that's fabulous for those of us that work in higher education is the change of the computer science curriculum in schools means that I think most students that join us now at least have some kind of understanding of what they're getting themselves into. That's great on a positive side. On a slightly less positive side for us, I think, is that the uptake of GCSE and indeed A-level computing is such that we can't yet, great when we can, we can't yet mandate that all our incoming students have done either. So we're still in a situation where we have a huge and diverse range of, of experience of computing within the first year, which led us into this study really. It led us into looking to what sort of dispositions within our student community uh, paved the way towards successfully un un undertaking study. And I think because of this diversity of intake, we, we can't assume knowledge. So within our first year, we're still covering a, a number of fundamental computer science concepts. Uh, apologies for not sharing my camera. Uh, I've been having the pleasure of teaching online now for the last three weeks and I live quite rurally and my broadband connection, as I'm sure many of yours has, has, has gone down and down and down. And now I find that I, I normally have enough bandwidth to share my audio and share a presentation, but if I put my video on, I'll either sound like a droid or, 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 or something else will go wrong. So uh, apologies for that. But anyway, moving on, what I'm going to try and talk through this afternoon is... Oh, Come on. I'm going to have a quick look, talk for the background. I'm going to talk about the research methods that we've applied to this particular problem, our early day findings for this. And as I say, this is a preliminary study. So we will talk about the limitations, constraints of the research, talk briefly about the, the additional work we've done this year and thoughts for the future. So, as we all know, I think computer science is challenging and learning programming in particular. Is, is, is challenging. Uh, there's a number of reasons for that, again, as we all know, but there's quite recent research suggests, and again, I'd like to emphasize these are, are not numbers I recognize directly myself in my own institution, but recent research suggests that at university, introductory programming modules have an average fail rate of up to about 30%. Now, clearly that's really quite, quite high. As I say, it's not, not figures I recognize ourselves, but it's this, uptake of um, and, and learning initial computer science is, is, is particularly challenging. And again, as educators, we, we kind of know effective learning matters because that's what enables student success. And we also know, don't we, that what students know before we start to teach them matters, but there's also something about their dispositions and makeup and, and, and psychology and, and relationship with education that matters too. And indeed, research shows that resilience how positive students are in terms of how they they adopt to, to, to changing circumstances and challenges and not finding things as easy they might matters to as well. I think that's particularly true in the context of computer science, at least that's what we thought when we started this particular study. Uh, I think when you're learning to program, you, you naturally fail, you naturally uh, overcome different challenges along the way. We'll, we all come at this from our own background to an extent and again, admittedly, I tend to computer programming via C++, via Unix, via an inline VI terminal, which is not something I'd recommend and it's not something we do today. It's great to see all, all the work ongoing with Scratch and the, the, the PRIM framework and indeed in, in universities recommended practices for, for peer programming and all the peer support mechanisms that, that universities put in place and indeed advanced supportive tools like processing, like BlueJay and, and so on. But even so, I think a lot of students find that initial learning to program quite hard and how they respond to it is, is, is quite interesting which led us into this particular study. So as I say this is a particular preliminary study in which we're looking at 
two measures of positive psychology, positive psychology being how an individual responds to, to stress and, and pressures. And I'm slightly conscious here that as a university academic and a computer scientist, I'm talking about a set of psychological measures, which I, I recognise those who work in the primary sector in particular, as, as the father of a seven-year-old son, may be more familiar with the concept of resilience and learning resilience to actually matter. But anyway, the two measures that we, we, we looked at in particular were Duckworth's 12-item grit scale, uh, Nicholson that brides a bridge 12 question questionnaire and again not a psychologist but looking quickly at these two different measures the, the grit scale and Nicholson that brides with image quotient even as a computer scientist it, it's abundantly obvious that these two are actually measuring a different set of psychological profiles both measure things that support success but both of them measure it in a slightly different way. And indeed the research teams had long um, and adept discussions a, a, about this. And I feel, and it's, 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 it's my opinion rather than any, 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 any great knowledge, the, the grit scale feels quite a brusque measure. And to be provocative, it's almost a measure of success that you'd, you'd find in apprentice type uh, candidates. It's that real plow forward regardless Type, type type questionnaire whereas the the Nicholson McBride resilience quotient feels to me at least much more uh, has much more language that's more familiar to us as educators it's much more a little bit more gentle it rec rec recognizes the need to respond to failure but in a, a little bit more gentle way and if, you, if you're not familiar with either of those two metrics I'd encourage you to have a quick look at the Duckworth one there that's Duckworth's website would it's their te uh, 10 point rather than 12 point questionnaire but will give you a clue regarding the, the overall points there and also there's a link there to a version of the Nicholson McBride one and if you do complete that uh, what we'll do is after the after the event we'll uh, provide you your score together with the other scores of, of the people that are, are com completed so conscious of time move, moving forward here we followed a fairly typical research mechanism for this year. Well, clearly, we got a, a approval from our ethics committee to do this. We then implemented our two surveys via our online e-learning platform and students completed them via their mobile phones during a lecture. We provided students their results together with an interpretation of what the, those results meant in terms of how resilient or otherwise the students were. We provided guidance in how to grow that resilience and we provided offers of further support. We also explicitly requested for students' consent to be involved in the study, principally because at the end of the year we also uh, we, we obtained the, the marks of the students that gave us their consent and analysed to what extent we felt that we, we could show rather that grit or resilience but could be contributing to that overall success. It was to a, a first year cohort uh, in terms of numbers, 58 students completed grit, whereas 50 completed resilience. That may be because we asked them to do the grit survey before the resilience. And then following on from that, we engaged in correlation and analysis and attempted to explore the predictive strength via logistic regression. But we just to emphasize, we're not building a predictive model here. We're using the technique as a mechanism to explore to what extent there was a, we could argue there was a strength of relationship between the two. Okay, so in terms of results then, uh, this, this, I've got two slides now. I've got this slide here, which is related to grit. And my next slide is, is related to, uh, to, the, to, to, to resilience. Uh, just to briefly explain this, this presentation, the numbers here are the correlation coefficients and anything that isn't crossed out is signif statistically significant at the one. What we're seeing here for grits, the, the overall grit score was not correlated with attendance, it wasn't correlated with the score for databases, it wasn't correlated with their score for our web technology module, it wasn't correlated with our score for the computer systems fundamental module, it was correlated with our introductory professionalism systems analysis module, it wasn't correlated with introductory programming and it wasn't correlated with overall marks. It's quite nice to see attendance was correlated with pretty much everything and as, as you'd expect I think the, the individual modules were co-correlated. So I think the, the takeaway from that, quite interestingly, there doesn't seem to be much evidence that grit in isolation is having much impact on either attendance or individual module marks or overall marks. 
Uh, we also did, a, we got a similar outcome from our logistical regression and we've got a forthcoming paper for the ACM ITSI conference this year, which will explore that in more detail. More interestingly, moving on to resilience, we get a, a different picture. Again, looking at our correlation coefficients, we can see that for, res, for this resilience coefficient, there is a correlation with attendance and all the modules and the overall module mark. And again, the attendances are correlated and the other things are correlated. And I think we thought this was interesting because it, it suggests that this particular metric for resilience, the, the NL and RUQ resilience, is much more representative of some kind of resilience that the students have and hence strategies that look at those criteria and attempt to grow those criteria could be helpful in further promoting the success of individual students. So as, as I say, limitation to this, it's a single, single university, it's a higher education, it's first year only. Yes, we fully acknowledge that this is a correlation, that's not evidence of a ca causation. It's a relatively small sample size. There's a sample bias in that we did it in a lecture, so not all the students were there and the students could opt out. So we've got some kind of um, um, non-attendees issues there and it's a solely quantitative study currently in that it, it would be very interesting to, to augment this with some more qualitative analysis of, of what these various things mean. Uh, we, we did consider whether we could look at gender and other factors, but uh, there was we, we don't feel the sample's big enough to do that. And additionally, there might, there's a risk of identifying individual students. So we were, we were cautious in doing so. so in terms of conclusions, we, we think that there is potential use of this 12 item resilience scale to look at as factors that promote student success. There isn't any evidence for the GRIT scale and that's consistent with some other recent work and we think this presents us with a, a number of really interesting opportunities to move forward. This year we've repeated the study with resilience and I was hoping that we could, because our, our, our program hasn't changed much between the two years. I was hoping that we could combine the two samples together. I have 110 uh, responses this year that I was hoping I could combine with last year to create a meaningful data set. I clearly can't in the current circumstances because uh, while, while I think we'll get some really interesting analysis is on depending what the impact of resilience is upon students, I clearly can't combine them in, in, in any meaningful way with last year because of the different ways that we're delivering at the moment because of the ongoing ongoing circumstances. So in terms of way, way, ways forward for this, uh, we feel that there's some real opportunities to look at how effective different initiatives can be to imp improve and enhance and grow students' resilience. Uh, clearly we've got the, we're looking at the effectiveness of peer mentoring programs and pair programming and all those sorts of things and other forms of counseling and steerage and, and so on but there's there are some i don't i don't know if we'd be brave enough to try it but there are some universities around the country which also look at uh, student mindfulness training and that sort of thing meditation i'm not sure our students necessarily would engage that too well but they are they are there and they have been tried elsewhere we're quite keen to, as I say, replicate the study and extend the study with qualitative data. We don't know quite where, maybe other universities or other sectors would be, be really quite exciting. And long term, we think that, that this, this suggests that this, this measure may be really productive and really effective to feed into various uh, learning analytics modules, and learning analytics approaches as a way of better understanding up front uh, which students could benefit from, from further coaching and, and, and support. But also I think what, what, where the real reason we drove it was a, was a mechanism to encourage our department to engage further with softer supporting mechanisms to try and ensure and coach and, and maintain the success of as many of our student uh, community as we possibly could. Anyway, I think that's close to my time. Is that right? I'm yeah, very, thank you. Amazing very timekeeping. I'm very happy to take any, any questions. And additionally, there's a, as you see on that particular slide, there's a, there's a, a link to a, a survey there that I would, I'd love it if you filled it in. There's an opportunity in there to ask us further questions and uh, a few other things that I'd really appreciate your, your views on. Thank you very much. <laughs>